Ladies and gentlemen, as some say with Tom and Nikki, welcome to the program. You can actually tweet us at uh, hashtag MyLibsLive for the program today. I have Norman Goldman with me. I have Nikki with me. We're doing something new with the Google Hangout, so it's going to be interesting. And I want to welcome you to the show. And Norm, uh, you're a... a I, I want to say liberal, but I, you're not quite liberal. You're you're. How do you define yourself as a talk radio show host? I know the conservatives may call you liberal. Well, I can't stop what other people are going to say about me. And Tom, thanks for inviting me. And Nikki, thank you for inviting me. I'm, I'm having a little trouble with my voice, so if it, it's not your ears, if I sound a little different, I've got a cold that just doesn't want to go away. But that notwithstanding. Uh, you know, the liberal and progressive thing, Tom, uh, I'm sorry if this is going to sound a little harsh, but the truth of the matter is, is that they have been playing chess. We have been playing Parcheesi for decades now, decades. The evildoers have spent bajillions of dollars and tremendous time consciously uh, making the word liberal a dirty word. They did this as this is straight out of Madison Avenue marketing. They have branded, positioned, and otherwise pigeonholed people they don't like with a label that they have turned into mud. And they have done that intentionally. All the high-minded, self-important liberals and progressives out there have never even given a thought, not five seconds worth of thought, to the branding and the positioning of liberal and conservative and mainstream, any of these trigger words that get people to have a whole series of thoughts triggered or tripped by one word. No, you're, we you're, have you're not right. even noticed that they have been doing this, and now the deed is done. And we have been marginalized, and word liberal and progressive means foreign, different, radical, other, and bad. And this was a conscious decision by the Koch brothers and all of the evildoers, just like Toyota and Honda and Ford and every other advertiser, Coca-Cola, they spend gajillions amounts of dollars to try and create an image in people's minds so that it's just like the Manchurian candidate. All you got to do is say, let's play a game of solitaire, and boom, the brainwash just do what you want them to do. We haven't even noticed that they've been doing this, and they have already succeeded, and now we got people going, why can't we win? This is why a minority of Americans America, a small minority of America, keeps winning elections because they've tricked people and we walk right into it and say, yeah, I'm a liberal, I'm a progressive. And to the vast majority of the American people, we are bad. And we don't want, and, and so many of us are prideful. We say, no, I'm not going to change. I won't change. You mean you sound like Mitt Romney. I'm not going to change. Let's go back to 1957. Tom, they have outthought us. They have outorganized us. They have outpositioned us. They have outbranded us. They have outmaneuvered us in every way possible. And frankly, all the Democrats in this nation should be ashamed of themselves for having let a bunch of a small bunch of miscreants beat the snot out of them. No, I I, I hear you. And, <laughs> How's that? I, I, How's that for a straight from the heart? No, I hear you. And that's one of the reasons why I named my network MyLiberals.com. Because I guess from the great Kevin Smith movie, um, he uh, they they want to take a word back. I won't say the word, but it's it's negative connotations if you're African American, and it's not the N word. It's a different word. It's a term, and he he Jason Muse is trying to take the word back, and everybody's looking at him like, why the hell are you trying to do that? And I guess I'm the crazy old coot on the porch trying to take liberals back because you know if you look at how uh, JFK describes what liberals are I'm happy to be a liberal you know I, I don't have a problem with it and yes you're right it is pride um, but when you look at the conservators as I like to call them um, they are happy to be called teabaggers they take it with pride they don't see it as dirty um, they'll argue with you until they're blue in the face but, but they... the vast majority of Americans think teabaggers are bad 
Well, they their their name their name has been as varnished as tarnished and as radicalized as liberals and progressives. And, and the teabaggers are a small minority, and when the vast majority of Americans hear that, they say bad. Well, and and you're right. And here's my question then: If we're not, I, I identify with more of um, uh, Bernie Sanders uh, pol- style of politics. I'm a socialist Democrat. I, I'm actually, I'd say I'm to the left. Of, and you've just marginalized yourself I, from the vast majority of the American people. And, and I, call, I, you, call yourself a socialist, and they don't <laughs> have to hear anything else. They hate your guts, and they won't listen to you ever. I, I'm used to that. I have an ex-wife. You take, well, why would, <laughs> Tom, why do, you want to, why do you want to take yourself out of the game when the game just started? Why um, do you, in the top of the first, you say, I lose. <laughs> I mean, you got nine innings to play. Well, play then, the damn then, game. Then, 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 okay, then. Explain to me. Give me. Give me a way to play the game better. Because uh, I am a. I'm. I'm a normal, middle of the road, patriotic American, and let me prove to you how. Okay. That's it. Get blow past the labels, man. Spend five seconds or less on labels. Three seconds or less. One second or less. I'm a normal, middle of the road American. Here's my positions, and, and I think you'll agree with me. That's it. <laughs> And, and and the vast majority. Why are we playing word games? No. Why are we playing word games? They want to play word games, Tom. They want to play word games. They want to trap us into a debate of who's a liberal. I'm a liberal. You're a conservative. They have. This has all been consciously thought out on their side. But and we're it... just winging it. We're just winging it. They've got market research behind them. They've got focus group tested. They have put a billion dollars into figuring this stuff out. They know what Coca-Cola knows. Advertising works, and they've advertised us as bad and they've advertised them as good what a shock and then, so then how how without using a label how do we go beyond that because when i think of no labels i think of a moderate democratic corporatist and a republican corporatist getting there's together no, and doing a cromney bus so no, there's no problem there's no problem playing the word game back okay the, you know you, by all means call them look there are various trigger words that evoke negative emotions in people as to them corporations bad word for them they don't you don't hear them say it yeah they know corporations bad corporate criminal bad wall street bad teabag are bad they've got the same defect on their side there were trigger words on their side and you won't hear them say it you hear them talking about small business when they don't give a rat's rear end about small business they care about big business but there's another one big business yes if we we need to tag them you represent big business you represent wall street you represent the extreme fringe we can play the game back but we're not doing that and, well i i'd like to think i am in my small part with the show and i i think think you are um just call and, yourself my my patriots.com <laughs> but see to that, me, why what's the problem with that what's the problem with calling yourself a patriot I actually, let them attack you I, and then you say no i'm the patriot you hate america <laughs> i i to be honest um i actually thought of that and then i had this as as a, um in my mindset the when i thought of patriot i thought of clive and bundy <laughs> I mean, I know I'm a patriot. I know I want to, you know... Why are you going to let Clive and Bundy and Rush Limbaugh have the word patriot all to themselves? Oh, no, I'm, I'm not. That's what you're doing. It's exactly I, and what I you're doing. And, that, and that's why I wanted you on to have this discussion, because it's very hard for me to... I, I'm, I think like Ronald Reagan does. Is in well, mental, I don't know. <laughs> yes, and you say your voice is bad. Your voice is perfect, by the way. <laughs> um, well, I, there I, you go again. <laughs> I think I think in pictures, and and I like to um, paint a picture for my audience. Sometimes they do it badly. Sometimes they have to, you know, repaint um, with the paintbrush. And so I understand where the trigger words work against us too. But I think you're right with reclaiming patriot and reclaiming words but can i say use the same argument about liberals i mean that i i don't see it as dirty and mo- most of my audience don't see it as dirty because you're talking to yourself yeah that's true if you want to look at look where talking to ourselves has gotten us the republicans control both houses of congress and they stand a pretty good chance of winning the presidency yeah no no you're right and that that should scare every uh and and 
by trying to take back the word liberal, by trying to take back the word progressive, you're only 30 years and a billion dollars too late. <laughs> they've already they've already won. That game is over. You're fighting a losing battle. The media has already bought into it. The corporate media. If you want to win, you need to expand your base. You need to get people who aren't with you now to be with you. It's coalition building. It's building a bigger group of people to get yourself into a position of power. And yes, there is a group of Americans, millions of them, who call themselves liberals and progressive and will be only too happy to congregate around people who call themselves liberals and progressives. Yes, there are millions of people. The problem is there's 330 million in America, and there ain't enough who are willing to call themselves liberals and progressives to gather around those words to make it work. So what, Take a look at this election we just had. No, you're right. I rest my case. You're right, and and we saw a lot of polling with the marijuana and everything else that did work. That were suppose you know you could argue are liberal and progressive ideas and ideals. How did they present marijuana legalization? Not How did they present liberal, it. Yeah, they, you're right. They didn't use liberal and progressive. They said no. It's about states' rights. It's about individual freedom and liberty. And as soon as they said states' rights and individual freedom and liberty, look at what happened. Yeah. Sixty percent of the people said I'm for that. Yeah, and so. And I hear you, and I. That's why people watch uh, things like free speech TV because, and I agree with you to a degree. I'm just trying to, and maybe I will. A new year, new name. Who knows? Um, I still kind of like it, and I probably won't throw it out entirely. But um, I I hear you. Um, like free speech TV. Who doesn't love free speech, right? Right. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Uh, democracy. So why Why do they call themselves? So the, why do they call themselves free speech TV? Because everybody will go and at least check out free speech TV. And because everybody's in favor of free speech. Yeah, exactly. And I, I, I Why don't you call yourself mom and motherhood and apple pie? <laughs> Who's no, against that? Well, yeah, no, I, I, I hear you. Um, and that's why I wanted to, because I'm always willing to, even if I disagree on it or I think I disagree, willing to have the conversation. Because had I not, I would still be a conservator going to to self-hating gay, <laughs> you know? So um, there's that aspect of it. And I'm glad I've been able to have a conversation. And you make me think about this, and that's why I listen often than not. Um, but you just hit the nail on the head without even realizing it, Tom, is you never thought about it. Yeah. No liberal, no progressive has ever even thought about it. This is just how completely the evildoers have won. Because they ran a 30-year-long, 40-year-long, 50-year-long campaign with a lot of money behind it, a lot of thought, and a lot of coordination. And they did it, and we didn't even notice, and you've never even given a thought to it, which means they really did a great job. Because not only did they win the game, they won it without you even realizing there was a game being played. Yeah, and I... That's amazing, man. My hat's off to them. The Republicans have done a phenomenal job. They really have. I Show me another nation. Where, there, where a tiny, small minority of extremist radicals managed to convince everybody that they're the real winners. And I'll give you two easy ones. Adolf Hitler and Joseph Stalin. Yep, yep, yeah. And I knew, I, I'm getting some great tweets, and um, if you want to ask your questions and ask some, say, Nikki will read them. Uh, we'll read off some of the tweets to you. A lot of love for you <laughs> um, so far. And I knew they'd love you because I, they, my, my audience, like I said, I modeled my show. We do a little bit more swearing than you do because you have the FCC, you know, market. And you work, don't. And I don't. <laughs> um, so I could, if I wanted to, I could pinpoint an F bomb <laughs> if I really wanted to, but I'm not going to. Um, not going to do it. Not, not going to do it. Exactly. Wouldn't be prudent. Exactly. Bar, Millie the dog. <laughs> um, but uh, w w to the next question here. Um, what do you think of projects like, because this is an important project to me, and you're a lawyer and an attorney, and I'd like your take on this. Um, we haven't, when I've called in, you haven't, we haven't gotten to this topic. What do you think of things like wolf-pack.com and getting a 28th amendment to get money out of politics and end corporate personhood? And, um, we're at possibly, um, we have Illinois, our Wolfpack.com got Illinois, Vermont, and California to call for a constitutional convention so far. We're close to New Jersey calling for it. What do you think of that strategy and strategery? And um, where where do we go from there once, if we do get it? Where do we go? 
Well, uh, I am uh, maybe I'm just being, uh, you know, contrary, but I am not a fan of a constitutional convention because there's no magic in having a constitutional convention. There, it'll be just like the one that happened uh, in 1787 that gave us the Constitution. You'll have delegates from all the different states, and you'll have a food fight. Now, in 1787, when the delegates showed up from Georgia and Virginia and the 13 states, the 13 colonies, which had become states after the Revolution, you know, they had very divergent interests. Uh, there were the agrarian interests. There were the banking interests. There were the slaveholding interests. So you had a food fight. And the difference between then and now is that in those days, they were willing to make deals. They made compromises, and, and the, the entire Constitution itself is one big set of compromises. And the fact that we have the first ten amendments is further evidence of a compromise, because some of the founders did not like the Constitution as it sat. They said it's too short. It's too vague. It doesn't go near as far enough to protect individual freedoms against a big, oppressive, potentially large and overbearing federal government. So a deal was made because these are all politicians who are cutting deals. A deal was made to mollify the dissenters by giving them the first 10 amendments, passing them as a package along with basically along with the Constitution. And so they were willing to make deals. But look at the deals they made. They allowed slavery to continue until 1808, which would be the first time Congress would be able to outlaw it. And they figured by that time there would be enough slaves in America where just natural reproduction would keep slavery going forever. They totally kicked the can down the road on slavery other than just allowing it to exist until 1808, until at that point Congress could ban it. Uh, they put in the Second Amendment to mollify the, the slave owners because the slave owners had been having all kinds of slave rebellions, and they wanted a local militia to be able to put down slave rebellions. And there was very real concern amongst the slave-owning states that the national government, the new national government, would mobilize a national army and march down to the south and forcibly end slavery. And they wanted to be fully armed to be able to prevent that. And, of course, we ended up with exactly that happening with the Civil War. The Constitution was the product of a whole long series of political compromises by a bunch of very skilled politicians who were in a mood to compromise because they wanted to set up a, a real nation. They had been operating under the Articles of Confederation, which had not worked, and so they needed to, to make something happen. That's not going to happen today. Sarah Palin is going to show up. Michelle Bachman is going to show up. Ted Cruz is going to show up. Rick Perry is going to show up. And they're going to say, we're going to rewrite the Constitution to ban abortion, to ban gays from getting married. And, of course, people like you and me are going to show up and say, we're going to ban corporate personhood. We're going to ban uh, private money in our political system. And, and the whole thing is going to end up in gridlock. I see no benefit to a constitutional convention other than to totally lay bare all of the differences that are so bitterly dividing this nation. I don't think a constitutional convention has any magic to it. It's just going to gridlock. Nobody's going to agree on anything because nobody now is in a mood to, especially the evildoers. The, and notice the way I keep using that word, Tom. I do. I I'm do. Branding, I'm branding and positioning. I do. Branding and positioning. It's Madison Avenue. Branding and positioning. They are evil. They are extreme. They are radical. They are not Americans. They are Nazis. Branding, you got to say it over and over again for 30 years, a billion times, in order to get people to finally get it through. But we no. got to get money out of politics. The only way to do it is through a, a, a constitutional amendment. And a constitutional amendment is a wonderful opportunity because it requires the people behind the constitutional amendment to organize. And it requires the people behind the constitutional amendment not only to organize, but to organize over a long period of time. We have become so interested now in American instant soup and instant microwave dinner and instant gratification and instant this, instant that. You know, sorry, reality doesn't work that way all the time. And if you want to amend the Constitution, congratulations. You're on a 10 to 20 to 30 year effort, and you'd better have the staying power to do it or else you'll lose. Now, that that's where where that was my next question. And I'm talking to Norman Goldman of the Norman Goldman show, who I am I freely disclose, I am a fanboy. <laughs> um I modeled my show a little bit more swearing because he can't on with the FCC and being on the radio, but I pretty much modeled how I do my show uh, through your show. And I I, I have always We're adored. both in deep trouble. Yes. 
And they don't um, have my box here, so I can't play a drum set. Uh, right, Otherwise, um, I'd hit you with a drum set. <laughs> and um, and I, uh, that's where I want to do is where, what do we go through? But Nikki, do we have any asks? Ask some say tweets yet? Because you can ask Norm a question via ask some say. Nikki, do we have anything yet, or you yeah. want to wait a little bit? Yeah, we do. Okay, uh, shoot some uh, at Norm. We'll do them one at a time if, and go from there. Okay, first one actually came on Mixlr. I don't think they have a Twitter account, but PR35120 asks, when are people going to talk about technology taking over jobs? What happens when technology takes even more jobs? How will we take care of our people when the technology does take more jobs away? It's a great question. Uh, just ask the, the Teamsters who used to drive dray horses. I mean, 100 and... 20 years ago, 110 years ago, um, there were the, the, the Teamsters. They were the guys in the big wooden carts who had dray horses, D-R-A-Y, and the horses would drag these wooden carts around, and they'd had milk and cheese and all this stuff, and they would deliver everything. And then the automobile came around and all these mechanized cars, and the, dream, the dray horses and the Teamsters said, well, what are you, you going to do? Our jobs are going to disappear. Well, we saw what happened. A lot more jobs were created. Even today, look at today, you've got all these IT jobs, you've got all this huge tech industry, like up in Northern California, but in elsewhere. I mean, North Carolina has a big tech industry center. There's tech everywhere, and there's all these jobs created for coding and for storage and clouds and this and that. The economy is always changing. We're never, ever going to be able to stop change from happening. The world's got seven and a half billion people on it. There's a tremendous amount of energy, mental energy, physical energy. The world is constantly changing and there are new opportunities and old things go away. That's just the way it's always been. And so we're going to have to figure out how to get people the skills that they need, which is the education they need to get the skills they need for the jobs. There are lots of jobs available, but there's a skills gap because we're not investing in education, and we need people to be much more educated now. The jobs that are going away are the blue-collar, high-pay manufacturing jobs like at General Motors and Ford and Chrysler. Those jobs are going away because of technology. So it's it's become almost impossible now to just have a high school diploma and get a good paying job with good benefits and security. The economy is different now than it was in the 1950s. And we're just going to have to acknowledge that. We've got to spend a lot of time and money building up the education system, getting people educated so that they can take the jobs that are being created by this new economy. Times have changed and we'd better adapt. And, and I think that's the model for, for this discussion, uh, Norm, is we need to adapt. Um, some say what Tom and Nikki is adapting for the new year. We do lots more interviews now. And thank you again for doing this with us. I know we're a small show, and, you know, you didn't have to come on, and you did anyway. And I My re- pleasure. I re- um, don't I re- worry about it. My I, pleasure. I'm happy I, to do it. I really appreciate it. And um, so I want to say that anyway. Um, and uh, Nikki, why don't you do an ask some say tweet or chat room? If you want to message us in the chat room, we'll read them. Nikki, Nikki is my executive producer extraordinaire, and she keeps me on my toes and whips me every once in a while. And, and uh, by the way, I know that answer was not very satisfying, but it is true. Yeah, I mean, well, we uh, just got to work with the facts and live with the truth. And here's uh, another question for you to ponder after the next ask some say tweet. Um, and you can, however you want. Do you think with the TTIP and uh, TPP and all this stuff, they're trying to turn the the evildoers, or as I call them, the fascist um, party? That'll work. That's um, a good word. I like that one. Um, the fascists, uh, and it could be Democratic or Republican fascists, by the way. Um, equal opportunity here on some say. Um, I think the Republicans fit the bill much more closely. Oh, oh I, I do, unless you're Jay, <laughs> unless, uh, unless, uh, unless you're Jay Nixon in Missouri handling Ferguson. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but yeah. Well, you know, show me, show me a Southern Democrat, and I'll show you a Republican. Yeah. Amen. And you know, yeah. the label again doesn't matter. You got to look at the substance. Jay it's... Nixon can call himself a Democrat. He sure, he's much closer to Nixon than he is the Democratic yeah. Party. Yeah, I, I, I hear you on that. And um, but before we get to her her question, do you th- you think they want us to be so dumb that we're happy to take any? job at any pay and we'll be like 
Oh, it's like you said, branding. Oh, get away with the minimum wage. Pay us the ma maximum wage you think we're worth. And we'll bend over and take it up the rump roast. Because we're just so happy to be working to be able to stay in our homes. Well, I, I believe that they're using a play on the name of your show. There are some who say, let's try and, you know, make the education system as awful as possible so that we're going to, you know, create a permanent underclass, self-perpetuating underclass of McDonald's burger flippers and car wash employees and gardeners and stuff. And there are those who, who say that, but they don't have enough, enough power. America is a huge, very complicated country with – Education largely uh, assigned to local communities, local counties and states, and it's really a matter, you know, the federal government does not do much in education other than fund it. I mean, I think the federal government provides like 8% of the funding for education. And George W. Bush, ironically enough, with his, you know, I'm a Republican, I believe in small government, he really made the national imprint on education much larger with his silly uh i don't even, no child left behind and and that that imposed a lot of big overreaching federal government nanny state standards on all the localities and the localities rebelled and now the president and even this republican congress have mostly repealed and totally dismantled the no child left behind because it doesn't work. So it, it's really up to the states and the localities to invest the kind of money that they need to build up their education system. And it would be a lot easier if we weren't spending a trillion dollars a year on a global empire so that we'd have more resources available to education. But really, you know, when it comes down to it, people have got to take responsibility for themselves. They've got to go get an education. They can't wait for government to say, we're going to give it to you. There are community colleges everywhere that are still reasonably priced, sort of. People got to get into community colleges. They've got to get themselves a skill set to be able to survive and thrive in this new economy, which is an information economy. No, you're right. And I, by the way, I want I want to credit you. Um, and Nikki's going to do an ask some say question, I promise. But I want to credit you. You got me listening to Ed Schultz again. Um, and watching him again after um, he did his no KXL thing with your rant about we sometimes disagree, don't take your toys away and stop listening to somebody who doesn't disagree. You actually have to continue on and help, you know, maybe change their mind. But the minute you walk away from that battle, you're the, basically, and I'm paraphrasing, you're the loser. So I want to give you a little bit of credit um, for, for that because it really, because I was so, and I know he's a, a friend of yours from way back because that's how long I've been listening to you. Um, uh, and um, he, he so angered me with that. And I couldn't understand why he did it. And we have a lot of Ed Schultz show, so, show listeners too. Um, uh, and I wanted to give you credit on that. And um, Tom, I appreciate Can I interject something very quickly? Sure. I, I, if I can. I don't do very much very quickly. But here goes. I perceive the value of what I do, whether it's here with you and Nikki or whether it's on uh, my show. I perceive the value of what I do as giving people food for thought. If I can spark a thought or a chain of thoughts or put people on a path that they had not been on before, if I can get them to look at an old issue in a new way, if I can get them to do something that they've never done before in their minds, then I perceive that I have, you know, get Carl Rove in an aircraft carrier, mission accomplished. I'm not here to get people <laughs> to like me. I'm not here to get people to love me. I, you know, I, I mean, I, I, I'm still amazed that, that I have fans. I'm, I, I didn't do this to get fans. I didn't do this for an ego stroke, and I'm not doing this for an ego stroke. I want to get people to think fresh, think differently. And in order to get people to think fresh and think differently, guess what? you got to listen to people who don't always agree with you. If you want to live in an echo chamber, go watch Fox Boobs. I mean, that's all they do is they feed the same old tired nonsense to the same old tired group of old people who only want to be told, yes, you're right, yes, America's bad, it's changing away from you, you're the good, you're the pure, this is your land, this is your nation, it's being stolen away by a bunch of undeserved non-white people I mean if you want to do that then you know you're then you know you're a fox boobs person the key to being an independent free thinker 
fierce independence is being able to calmly listen to somebody who tells you something you don't want to hear. And while you're still, that bubbling anger is working its way up inside of you, be able to grab a hold of that and put it aside and say, maybe they've got something valuable to say. And even if they don't have something valuable to say, at least they'll get me thinking and I can come up with a good, strong reply to demolish what it is they're saying. It will advance my own mental sharpness to be able to deal with stuff that I don't want to hear. That is the benefit of listening to Fox Boobs and listening to people you don't dis- you don't agree with because they're going to make you grow, and that's what I've tried to do. Norm, and I, I can appreciate you so much because my uh, audience and I had had a back- backlash uh, a little bit about a, a Canadian fascist that I mentioned to you on our show that we had listening for a little while longer until, unfortunately, for some stuff that would. Well, we had to ban them. Um, but that was my argument. And But you made it so much clearer and more concise. So so, th- so thank you for that. And, that. and I'm willing, until you cross a line and you're not willing to either apologize for it or it was an accidental line you crossed, I will have anybody on this show. Um, and, I, and that's a great point, too. And, Tom, I don't mean to interrupt. But, sure, but, go ahead. You know, what, is it, what does it mean to be a member of the Democratic Party? It's a really important question. And your your argument of there are certain lines that you cannot cross fits perfectly. If you call yourself a member of the Democratic Party and say, I want to ban all abortions across the entire America, well, then you're not a Democrat. Congratulations, because you've crossed a red line. You've tripped a wire that cannot be tripped. There are certain fundamental things that are so critical to being a a member of today's Democratic Party and a member of today's Republican Party that if if you cross these lines, but there's only this, there should only be a few of them, and they should be really important. Yes, like yes. A, a, you know, tax the rich, uh, free college education. I mean, some big things. The stuff that Senator Elizabeth Warren and Senator Bernie Sanders talk about. Some of the, you know, a, a, an economy that works for everybody. Good jobs with good pay for everybody. You know, single payer Medicare for all health insurance. Uh, you know. Personal freedom and liberty, whether it's abortion or marriage or smoking pot, whatever it is, there are there, there should be on both sides, on all sides. If you're a Green Party member, there should be a few things that define a Green Party member. That if you disagree on one of those few really important fundamental things, then congratulations, you're not a member of the Green Party. You're something else, but you're yes. not a member of the Green Party. Yes. And we need to figure out what those are. And the problem when you see Ted Cruz and Rand Paul and the Republican Party tearing each other apart is they forgot that rule. They have, they have now declared that on each and every issue, no matter how small, how trivial, how non-important, uh, if you don't agree, then you're out of the team. You're off the team. You're out of the camp. And they've turned every issue, a, a thousand issues, many of them so esoteric. It's like how many angels can dance on the head of a pin. They've turned every one of them into a purity test, and that's why they're driving themselves crazy, because they're having these purity tests on way too many issues, and we've got to knock that off. You're, you're, you're exactly right, and uh, I'm, just, I'm not saying that because I'm a fanboy, but because you're hitting nerves, even with my audience. So let's, um, I promised Nikki to do some ask, some say questions. So Nikki, if you uh, would hit Norm with some ask, some say questions, please, and I'll shut up. <laughs> okay. Sure. First off, I have to mention, though, that Fox Boobs, love it. <laughs> That's great. I uh, never thought of calling it that. Um, well, Jim look Bar- who delivers the content, look who consumes the content, and look who's playing who for a sucker by creating the content. They're all boobs in different sets of the word. I mean, you know, for a lot of people, Fox Boobs is softcore pornography. <laughs> I mean, Amen it's to just, that. It's- it's just, you know, I mean, they're boobs. They're using their boobs. They're playing the audience for the boobs that they are. And the people who are creating the content say, boy, what a bunch of boobs. We can really manipulate these idiots without too much trouble. I mean, it's all boobs in all different senses of the word, and that's why I call them Fox Boobs. Fair, mm-hmm. fair enough. And go right. ahead, Nikki. Jimmy Bear asks, what is the future of America if we keep on this present course? It ain't good. <laughs> I can tell you that. Nothing good's coming from it. Fascism is on the march. Income inequality is at huge historically uh, high, huge historical highs. 
I mean, we are we are in deep trouble. We're frittering away our national wealth on a global empire. We're going to be like the Roman Empire. We're, I think we're at the bread and circuses phase of the Roman Empire, where we're just distracting people with, you know, high-tech gizmos and flashy stuff and look at this and diverting people from the fact that the economy is eroding away from under us. The educational system is eroding away from under us. The entire infrastructure of the United States is eroding away from under us. And, you know, unless we organize ourselves and figure ourselves out and get on the same page and be willing to not have these thousand-issue purity tests where if you're good on 999 of them but you disagree on one, you're off the team and we're all going to start tearing each other limb from limb. Unless we organize ourselves and figure ourselves out and, and, and take this country back, then we're doomed. Fair Sorry enough. to be the bearer of bad news. Sorry to be a naysayer, but there no, it is. You're 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 on where I am, and uh, I do want to um, actually no, I, I promised more tweet questions, so uh, or chat room questions. So Nikki, go for it. We, we'll we'll go for it, sweetie. All right, Bree Hood asks if the Constitution was framed off the Iroquois Great Law of Peace, would that mean the Great Law has legal precedence? No. Constitution's its own separate document and whatever it was founded off of, and there were people who would disagree with that uh, allegation, and they would say that the Constitution was based upon an earlier draft of the Articles of Confederation drafted by James Madison, uh, I, you know, but no. Whatever was the precursor document or documents, whatever were the precursor ideas that created the Constitution, all of that just gets merged into the document and there is no chance legally of citing anything but the constitution and any allegation that you are that the constitution comes from something else the, the courts will look at you and say well that's a nice academic paper but it isn't getting you anywhere in this courtroom fair fair enough uh nikki go another one okay uh blue roots news asks why can't we buy congress back the same way we lost it i'm referring to lawrence lessig's may day project with a people's pack i think it's a great idea and and i say yes <laughs> buy your congress back and and i think that professor lessig is onto something um yeah. I, uh, yeah that's my question because uh then how how do we trump like coke cash i mean they, well, they, there's the a thing. lot of it, it sniffing around congress <laughs> well it, there's a there are a couple of ways to change the system of campaign finance that we have now one way we discussed which is to organize ourselves around the principle of a constitutional amendment and we're going to have to you know basically spend years and years and countless hours thousands of countless thousands of thousands of hours organizing around a constitutional amendment like move to amend has and there are a couple of others floating around i think they're all pretty good at some point we're going to have to agree on one of them but we need to organize around this one principle and 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 just say use it as a litmus test like one of those trip wires one of those irreducible red lines if you are for a constitutional amendment to get rid of Citizens United and and restore and, and make only public finance campaigns, then we are with you. If you're against it, then we're against you. And we don't care what your other issues are. If you're pro-choice, you're pro-marriage equality, you're pro-legal, it doesn't matter. If you're against, I mean, it, and, and the people who are, believe in this issue need to decide whether to make that a litmus test. That is one way to do it. Organize, elect members of the House, elect members of the Senate who will vote for a constitutional amendment. Remember, under the Constitution, the president has zero role to play. The president does not sign a constitutional amendment. The president does not veto it. It's as if the president doesn't even exist because for purposes of a constitutional amendment, the president does not exist. It's both houses of Congress. Uh, recommending a constitutional amendment to the states, two-thirds of each House of Congress, and then three-quarters of the states have to approve it. The president has zero role to play other than to the extent of campaigning for or against it, you know, power persuasion. So that's one way to do it, is organize and get in elected officials who are going to do it. The other way is the Professor Lessig way. Raise, uh, raise a hellacious sum of money. Uh, to rival the Cokes and go buy a bunch of politicians who will then go to Washington and, and propose this amendment to the states. But please remember that once Cong – even if we could get two-thirds of both houses to propose a constitutional amendment, you then need 37 states to approve the thing. 
That's three quarters. That's 37 out of 50, which means you can lose 13. We can start with Alabama and Mississippi. I mean, we're going to have to then organize in the states to force the state legislatures to approve this thing. So this is a huge task. The other way to do it, of course, the, the really cheap way to do it, is to just keep having Democratic presidents until enough Republicans on the Supreme Court die and then replace them with enough Democratic judges who revisit the issue and say, Citizens United and that McCullough case uh, versus FCC were both wrongly decided and hereby overturned, and we're restoring the um, the original McCain-Feingold law. And that, that would be the easiest way to so, do it. Uh, so, but, of course, the moment we do that, then they say Hillary Clinton and everybody gets mad. So, no, I hear you, and I'm not the Hillary's biggest fan. I, but not, that makes but, two of us. But I'm wanna, not her biggest fan either. I want to win. But, uh, I, don't, but, I don't have to love the president. I, I don't do. have to love everything the president has ever done. I, there are certain issues, and for me, the Supreme Court is the issue, and that's all I care about on the national level right no, now. Hey, the I, I, and, and that's your red line, and I hear you on that. I totally get it. Um, and... and how, you know what? Let, uh, let me frame this question a little bit better. But let's do uh, two or three more. Uh, as some say, because I know we're getting to the bottom of the hour. As some say with Tom and Nikki, I, I want to get to as many as these as we can because Norm has been so generous with his time on a Sunday. So you basically done six shows. And um, by the way, I was able to get membership again. It's really worth it if um, to help you break even. I want to plug this for you of the Norman Goldman show. Um, my best friend got it for me as a uh, Christmas slash holiday Yule present. That's very kind. Um, That's so very nice. Thank I, I, I'm a member again. <laughs> um, so it, it's very much worth it, and your special is worth it. Um, and uh, it helps me. Three with... months for twenty bucks. Three yeah. months for twenty bucks at normangoldman.com. Exactly. And um, but how's then... that for a plug? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you're, you're, see, you're definitely an awesome sales I, I, This is why I model after you. <laughs> um, and there goes. Oh, well, the then fan. maybe we're both going to go down the drain. <laughs> the, 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 see, there's... if I have my box, I could hit the drum set right there. <laughs> and there but... you go, right? Um, and uh, all I needed was an absolutely, and it'd be perfect. I, I am boxless, so I, know, I have right? none of my clips. It's like Batman without his utility belt. It's like I can't shoot anything at anyone. But yeah, you're right. Um, and I'm turning into a little bit of fanboy. So and Nikki, save me from that, please. Save you here, Jeff Waldorf. Since we were talking about Hillary, Jeff Waldorf asks, "Do you think Warren Democrats are doing more harm than good fighting corporate Democrats like Hillary?" Do you think we should focus less on social issues like gay marriage and abortion and instead go towards more economic issues? Uh, as to the first question, I think we are doing zero harm to anybody at this stage of the game talking about Senator Warren. We are nowhere near a presidential election. We are far away from the, even the first caucus or primary. It is this time in the election cycle for people of the various political parties to say who they like. I think it's wonderful that there are tons and tons of real FDR-style Democrats who are very vocal in their support of Senator Warren. I'm a huge supporter of Senator Warren. If she ran, it would probably get my endorsement, but she ain't running. And so, but that, but she is a leader of the Democratic Party. She represents a very large portion of the Democratic Party, and I think it doesn't do anybody any damage at this stage of the cycle to say that and to talk about it and use their First Amendment rights. Can you give me that second part again? Because I focus more on the first part. Yes. Yeah, there sure. was a second question. Yeah, there. Nikki, could you? Um... Yeah. yeah, sure. Um, he was saying should we focus more on gay marriage abortion issues i mean less on social issues like gay marriage and abortion and lean more towards economic issues yes hey i'd like that quick answer that uh, uh, yeah i mean income inequality this is this is this ties in uh to the whole liberal progressive thing because if you can get people to stop thinking in the old strictures, the old boxes that we have all been, you know, sealed into. And if you can get away from liberal and con uh, progressive and conservative, and you just say to people, good jobs at good wages, stop outsourcing our jobs to China for slave labor, raise the minimum wage, 
create a clean, simple, non-loophole-ridden tax code. You know, these are issues that have overwhelming support amongst the American people. And so that the Democrats ought to be branding and positioning and labeling themselves as economic populists, which are all these issues. To the extent that we talk about the social issues, a lot of it's just reaction to the Bible thumpers, because they keep talking about the social issues, and we've got to protect the people who they're attacking. So my approach on the social issues is, again, forgetting the labels, but to use their own framing against them. So when they say ban abortions, they say, why do you hate freedom and liberty? And when somebody says, well, what's an abortion? I say, it's a woman exercising her freedom and liberty. And why is this any of your business? And why, why are you going to force a big nanny state government to monitor every woman's month, monthly cycle and compel her to carry every pregnancy to term? You don't get much more big government liberal than that. Use the word against them. You're a big government liberal. You think government has all the answers. You're a nanny state government lover. You just want government to go and impose its will on individual people, strip them away from their freedom and liberty, and that applies to abortion, to marriage equality, uh, death with freedom and liberty. People call it death with dignity. I call it death with freedom and liberty, again, using their words against them. Cannabis legalization. These are, you know, to the extent we talk social issues, I just want to stuff their own uh, talking points right back up their nose and say, you hate America. You hate freedom and liberty. You hate privacy. You love big government. And then go back to the economic issues. Why are we sending all of our good jobs to China for slave labor? And by the way, they're a communist country, and they're worse than Cuba in every way possible. And yet you're upset about President uh, Obama uh, normalizing relations with Cuba? Uh, I've talked too much. Uh, you no, guys go back. No, you're, yeah. no th this is our opportunity to get to know you a little bit better. So it could, <laughs> I, I'm one of these guys who loves long form, and that's why I appreciate uh, you giving us the hour because we don't do commercials I do it 15 here. hours a week, Tom. I mean, for heaven's <laughs> sake, this is your show. Yeah. This is your show. You should be doing more talking. Well, you know, I, I not everybody, not my, my audience didn't know you, and I, I, I wanted you to give the education better than better than me being the fanboy. <laughs> um, let's do one or two more questions real quick, and then I have a, a, a question that could go long, Nikki. One, pick one or two and one from the chat room, because I know we have a couple members of yours listening, um, so we'll try to be fair about it and norm at some point maybe next year if you'd be more than happy to come back we'd love to have you back at some point anytime awesome anytime. um nikki uh go go for it okay no more donations asks what are your thoughts on edward snowden do you accept the false mainstream media narrative that he's a traitor or do you accept the truth well, it's a nice way of framing that question. It's like asking, when did you stop beating your wife? But the, the, to answer it straight, I'm a huge fan of Edward Snowden. I think he's a true American patriot. And to those who say that he is a traitor, uh, they're, just, uh, they're just big government suppression, one-party state, Nazi-type people who don't want Americans to know what their government is doing. And in the true spirit of freedom and liberty and the free exercise of speech and Americans knowing what's going on, I think Edward Snowden is a classic uh, member of like the class of the founding fathers. I mean, I think James Madison and John Adams and all those guys would give him a standing ovation if they were here today. They'd say that's exactly the kind of guy we had in mind. Awesome. And uh, one more. Uh, why don't you do a chat room question? And by the way, uh, Jimmy Bear, who is a fan of Ed Schultz's show, um, wants you to run for president. I just want to, you know, if you want to, <laughs> if, if you want to, I'll give you, I appreciate I'll give... it, but no, I ain't dev no, 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 no. <laughs> Elizabeth Warren should run. Senator Bernie Sanders, Senator Warren Sanders, Sanders they run. I don't. Uh, well, I have my place. My place is to try and reach people's minds. Fair, fair enough. And you did, you do, you, you paid a beautiful picture and I, I see all the lovely artwork in my head. Um, and so I, I just, you know, more fanboy moments from me. Nikki, go ahead. <laughs> Nikki, did I lose you? Nikki, you there? Well, yeah, well, no. Yeah. I one. Okay, that's it. Sorry about that. Uh, go ahead. Uh, let's do one more play here from Roars. He asks, when do we get to the moving government to Istanbul part of the Roman Empire? Not in our lifetimes. 
but maybe one day, <laughs> not in our lifetimes. I, ironically, he's one of our international listeners. Rory is one of my first international listeners from uh, the Young Turks. We, uh, I, I will say that we have a lot of crossover, the Young Turks uh, listeners, and I know you know who Cenk Uger is. And, uh, big he, fan, a big yeah, fan. So um, that's, you know, great minds think alike. So what can I say? <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, I, I get the whole Constantinople splitting the empire thing. I mean, I under, I remember my history, um, but you know, the the fall of the Roman Empire analogy may be taken a little too far in that question, uh, <laughs> if, if we're going to take it literally. But look, America's got uh, America is a land of vast wealth, and we've been able to paper over and cover up a lot of our differences. By giving people flat screen TVs and and laptops and iPods and smartphones and stuff, I mean we've been able to you know kind of mollify people a lot with with material goods, uh, but we've frittered away so much of the wealth of this nation on military empire and by a bunch of greedy people at the top, the one percent dragging much of the wealth up there. I mean, it's like 80% of Americans are living on 20% of the national wealth. And because the nation is so wealthy, even that can be made to work. But that game ain't going to last forever. And at some point, I suspect it'll last a good long while because there's so much wealth here uh, that that game can last another 50 years. Easy. Before, you know, the people finally say enough is enough. I don't think any of us are going to be around when the you-know-what really hits the fan. I think that's a, that's a ways off because this system has a way of buying people off with material goods. And that is being tested now. I mean, you know, with Walmart and all this stuff, that's being tested. But I think it's going to take a lot more before people finally say that this is so unjust. It is so unfair that we're we're willing to really you know take to the streets and do something about it. I, I that's way off. Okay, and we got about ten minutes left, so I want to ask you um, a, a, a long-ended question because I wanted to cover this um, with the unfortunate shooting death of the uh, patrolmen and their officers in the cars. Um, do you think one this will sadly wake up more people to the issue and two do you think like uh mayor guliani and i will continuously call him that because he is a ghoul um i like that tom uh, i yeah. like that um, do it call it fox boobs call them you know un-american you're doing what i've been advocating when you call him mayor guliani yeah. that's you're doing what i'm advocating and uh, here, here's the here's the thing um, do you branding think he... and positioning. Never forget branding and positioning. Exactly. If it's good enough for Madison Avenue, if it's good enough for Toyota and Coca-Cola, by golly, it's good enough for us. Amen. And here's my question. Um, and then if you would like to plug your show or anything else, um, feel free um, afterwards. Um, and then I'll let you go because you've, you've given us way more time on a Sunday, so I really do. Hey, I'm having the time of my life. Uh, I don't know about you. you I wanna, enjoy no, this. I love, I mean, I, if you want to go a little longer, we got. I know we got more questions. I, I'm here for you. Where okay, am I going? Fair enough. Um, then we'll go until you're ready to say get the hell out of here. Well, um, I think my voice is failing, and that's, no, that's an issue. Well, let's see what we can do with this. Uh, Mayor Guliani, I think he overplayed his uh, hand on, I call them Fox Noise. Um, uh, on, that works too. That's good too. Um, I call it calling out Mayor de Blasio and everything else. And I do think people will, one, notice this, no, put two and two together with Black Lives Matter. Because notice it didn't, doesn't say only Black Lives Matter. It says Black Lives Matter. And that encompasses everyone. Everyone matters. And do you think that he overplayed his hand and people are starting to see what the conservators are really about with this issue. And um, do you think that we really need to be, yes, uh, 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 someone who kills a cop is is as bad as a, a killer cop in my eyes. If you kill a cop, you're equally as bad as somebody who killed someone w without being justified to do it. And do you think they overplayed their hand and do you think we'll get to more social justice um, in, in the long run, in the long game of it? Let me try this from a, diff a somewhat different angle. What you're seeing from not just Mayor Guliani, and I like that one, Tom. I'm going to use that, Mayor Guliani. Uh, hey, Rand Paul, whole, and all you want. <laughs> the, well, and I'll give you credit for fair, it. And fair I, I mean, look, I, I'm always looking for creative material, too. Fair enough. But 
it's not just Mayor Giuliani. It is the whole range. There's George Pataki, former Republican governor of New York, who, by the way, is running for president. Uh, he's not going to win, but he's running. There's a bunch of Republicans. And, and Tom, this, this proves the point that I've been making all along. From the moment those two cops were shot, the entire Republican corporate phalanx immediately sprang to action to frame the issue as look at these Democrats with their coddling of the protesters from Ferguson and their coddling of the protesters in New York over the Eric Garner death. And so it's the Democrats' fault that these two cops are dead because they coddled and encouraged a crazy man with a gun to go shoot cops in retaliation. This is the clever, evil genius of the Republican way. Immediate action. Jump on it. Frame the issue this way. The Democrats don't do this, have never done this, don't even have a clue what's going on. But the Republicans immediately seize the conversation and dominate the conversation by framing the issue as it's the Democrats' fault that these two cops are dead because the Democrats coddled these protesters and gave them aid and comfort, and they are the enemy. Yeah, and don't now, forget, and don't forget, Ned, Ned uh, Norm, I, I called you Ned, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Norm, call me Ned. <laughs> I've been called far worse than Ned. Well, don't, don't worry, you're not, not here, you're amongst friends. <laughs> Ned's a compliment compared to some of the other things I've heard. <laughs> Fair enough, and I'm sure they're mostly from conservators. Um, let, they're from evil-doing, unpatriotic, un-American Nazis. I like that. They're a little long, but I like now, it. Now that's, <laughs> well, but you can, you can you just say, you know, why do you hate America? Yeah. Or, you I mean, mean just, just why do you hate it? That immediately puts them back on their heels. Well, they say, I don't hate America. Well, obviously you hate. See, now you're on the attack. Yes. Why do you hate America? You've just, it's like a little punch in the jaw. Yes. Now you've stunned them. Now they're defensive, and you go in for the kill. This is how it's done. They've been doing it to us for 50 years. It's about time we respond. Well, and that's why I was like. Fire, fire. And, and, and that's um, why I was like, um, if we're going to play this game with the, with the cop, when Mike Brown happened, let's let's frame the argument with um, uh, with Nor with Norman Goldman, right? Um, Let me offer you I, another thought. Pardon me for interrupting. Sure. Look at all look at all the guns and ammo. I blame the NRA. I blame the NRA. See, so Mayor Giuliani can go blame the Democrats. They say, look at the easy availability of guns and ammo. Any lunatic can go and get one. Yeah. And. And so I blame the NRA. You want to blame the Democrats? I blame the NRA. Why is this guy in a possession of gun and bullets at all? Tell me that, Mr. I, I, I hate the Democrats because they coddle black people to go kill cops. And by the way, I, I gather the Republican Party is totally in favor of cops killing minorities. I gather I, – I didn't hear you guys – I didn't hear Mayor Giuliani speaking out saying, do you, th you think cops can just go kill people and just walk away and the public isn't going to notice? And, and some crazy guy isn't going to say, well, let me show you the other side of this equation and go shoot some cops. And maybe we ought not have this nation drowning in guns and ammo so any fool can say, I'm going to go kill me some cops and then make it happen. A Amen. Um, uh, Nick, do you? <laughs> we got The bottom line is, we got to stop shooting each other. We got to stop stabbing each other. We got to stop raping each other. We've got to learn respect, and we've. Uh, this isn't the Wild West anymore. Gary Cooper was a an actor. High Noon was a movie. Daniel Boone was in 1807. We got to knock this stuff off. We live in a highly complex, urbanized society. There's no place for all these guns and ammo. America's radically changed from what it was back in the old days. We got to get these guns and ammo away. Yep. We've got to find that we, we have ways to resolve our differences, and it ain't by shooting each other. And that's what I put on Facebook, by the way. Oh, it's no, generated yeah, the whole, exactly. I put it up on Facebook. I said, we got to just stop shooting each other. Yeah. It's and like, stop choking people. <laughs> you know, it's like the guy with Eric Garner. Hey, stop choking people. You don't have to be and, a brain and, surgeon and, and, to figure this stuff out. And that's what I said. And I, and I was like, well, why don't we use as 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 like-minded individuals, I almost said liberals, even though we're on my liberals network, at least for now, <laughs> um... I, my I, patriots, my patriots. Well, I was actually thinking brain. Hey, you'll get all the Republicans listening because they'll think you're one of them. I, I was actually thinking my Liberty Network. 
Uh, well, that's fine uh, too. Uh, that's yeah. fine too. And get a get a picture of Sarah Palin and stick it up there. <laughs> well, I do have one one of her sticking her tongue out. <laughs> um, it's Even always, better. Always fun. Um, but uh, here's the thing. Why don't we use their arguments? Because why why are you defending one of the worst cops who couldn't control the situation? Why did he have to go with his weapon? Sure, if you want to say that Mike Brown was this, that, and the other thing, okay, you continue to do that. But why are you defending a, a cop who probably shouldn't even be on the force? Because he couldn't, because he saw this guy as Hulk Hogan. Well, what does he see anybody else that he can't control? You know, and, and I think we, you're right about the framing. And that's what I try to do with this show is, um, I, and I'll admit, sometimes I fumble names and screw it up and throw an F-bomb over it. And we get a little, you know, <laughs> TNA. A little saucy, maybe? Yeah, a little, little, little saucy? Yeah, we, I got the British German in me, so <laughs> it goes there. Um, but... Why don't we use their, like what you're saying, use their own arguments and bash but look them how over quickly the they sprang into action, Tom. Yeah. Look how quickly they sprang into action. These cops were barely cold when Giuliani and the rest of the Republicans were out there attacking the Democrats for it. This is not accidental. They they are organized, they know what they're doing, and they sing from the same hymnal. We are not yeah. even aware that it's going on. Yeah. It, it pains me so much to see the Democrats. They're like little kids in knee pants being just whipped by a bunch of big bullies. And it's just astounding to me. I, I often question my own sanity. Am, am, I, am I seeing ghosts here? I mean, am I seeing reality? I may be the only one doing it. Am I the only one seeing this? How the hell can everybody be missing what's going on that's, here? That's the thing, Norm. You're not. And But I actually, on my own Facebook page, uh, I actually asked, am I having a conscious of crisis or a conscious of um, – something about money i can't even remember but I, I because i was like if if i went to back back to being a conservator i could make so much money i could get i could a freedom foundation would get me guys to give me blow jobs you know i because you know why not even you're gonna have I, to I, count me out on that one Tom. <laughs> but that, that's fine fair enough but you know what i mean i could really i could really just go to to bank and go to crazy town if i was willing to sell out but i'm not hey imagine what stephanie miller could do or i could do or yeah. tom Hartman, or mike malloy i mean if we went to fox boobs and said hey we've seen the light and we're ready to expose i mean they'd throw millions of dollars at us give us primetime tv show yeah. it would all be fraud it would all be lies you know we'd rot in hell for you know for the injustice of it but i mean you're right we could we could turn coat and and sell ourselves but but what look look at all the idiots who, who who prostrate themselves over on Fox Boobs. I mean that's all they're doing. They're just selling. They just want money. It's all a commercial adventure for those people. Yeah. They just they just want the Koch brothers to write them a big check, and very often they do. And and they don't they don't mind selling their dignity. They don't mind selling their souls. Because they don't have any souls to begin uh, well, we, with. We could they say, just want the cash. I'll, I'll say it because you're too kind a gentleman to say it. They whore themselves, as far as I'm concerned, and um, for the cash. And I, I get really tired of that. But I know, Nikki, we had some more ask some say questions. Let's do two or three, and then I, I know with your voice, I don't want to keep you uh, much more longer because of that. But, I, again, I appreciate the long, uh, giving me a little bit more time. Um, and this is going to be up on the YouTubes, too, by the way. Um, it's later my pleasure. Tom, it's all my pleasure. Later. I appreciate the invitation. I'm glad to spend some time with you. And um, uh, Nikki, do some uh, like three or four more, or at least until <laughs> Norm is ready to go. Uh, ask some say questions if you could. Okay, uh, we got one from one of his members in the chat room. PR thirty five one twenty. He asked one earlier, but he asks another one. Can we get more of a fascist state before we do anything? Say that one more time, please. Can we get more of a fascist state before we do anything? I think um, the fact well, that the government is controlling the government at this point. Well, uh, you know, it can look if the if the question is can things get worse, the answer is oh yeah, they can. And there is a large group of this country that's trying to make things worse. They think it's better from their perspective. We think it's worse from our perspective. But America could be a lot worse. And unless we stop them, it's going to be worse. I mean, uh, to me, America now is where America was in about 1882, 1888. 
when when John D John D Rockefeller owned Standard Oil and there was no other oil company, uh Jay Gould controlled the banks or the railroads were controlled and Andrew Carnegie had the steel mills. I mean, we're back to that because we have huge important sectors of the economy concentrated, the ownership is concentrated in very few hands. Look at the banking sector. Ten banks, ten too big to fail banks control seventy seven percent of the assets on deposit. I mean that's that's criminal. But that's the way America was before the Sherman Antitrust Act, before the Clayton Antitrust Act, before Teddy Roosevelt started trust busting. America was really bad. The railroads controlled everything, the oil companies controlled everything. There's only one oil company. There were only a few railroads. They controlled everything, and the public finally got disgusted and rose up and started putting in politicians who were going to change it. We're in that phase again. The the nation has been rolled back to that era, the gilded era after the Civil War and before Teddy Roosevelt. We've been at, there was this was an intentional policy to to make this happen, and it has worked because we Democrats are far too inept to stop it. And unless we find amongst ourselves another Teddy Roosevelt, it's just going to keep getting worse. Fair, fair enough. Uh, Nikki, go, go ahead with one, two more. Let's, let's throw out two more. Okay. Uh, Bree Hood asks, should law be taught throughout primary school and college? Yes. Yeah, I'd like that. Civics should be taught. Civics should be taught. Law should be taught. Political analysis should be taught. Thinking needs to be taught. Thinking needs to be taught. Critical thinking. Don't just memorize the 50 state capitals. Understand why there are 50 states and what are the powers of the 50 states. That would be a lot more beneficial to the future of America, to have people understand what federalism is and what the powers of states are as opposed to what the powers of the federal government are. That would be much more valuable than having people memorize the 50 state capitals, which is what we force kids to do. And, and you know, just empty, filling their head with a lot of you know, meaningless uh, floating in midair tied to nothing facts. It, you know, Christopher Columbus landed in 1492. That's great. That'll get you real far. I mean, we need to teach people to think, and we're not doing that. Um, I, Nikki, before you, Jeff Wardell for TYT Community asked one, why don't you ask that one about the Democrats being in it? I know you probably had one or two lined up, but could you ask that one? Because that's a really good question um, yeah. for, from Jeff. Sure. He asks, are many Democrats inept or complicit? Uh, half and half. <laughs> The good ones, the real Democrats, what I call the FDR Democrats, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, are inept, incompetent, don't have a clue about uh, organizing, don't have a clue about strategizing, have no clue about branding and positioning. And the other half of Democrats are like Bill Clinton saying, uh, let's just be half the fat cat of our regular Republicans and, uh, and we'll be fine. And that you know, I I blame Bill Clinton. I really do. He's the guy who came up with this. Uh, him and a guy named Al Fromm came up with this third way. And it, you know, it was obvious when Bob Dole in 1996, he was the Republican nominee for president. 1996, he made a joke and he made it often. He said, you know, I got to hide my speeches because Bill Clinton keeps stealing them and giving them first. And he, you know, it's a great joke. And I wish I had my box. I do a drums thing. But it was true. Bill Clinton basically made the Democratic Party. Half the fact out of our regular Republican, they're Republican light. And so half the Democrats are in this whole, let's obscure the differences, let's be more like Republicans and people will vote for us. And half the Democrats are Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders types who don't have the first clue as to how to organize a campaign for the state assembly or the state senate who don't have any clue as to being tolerant. I'm sorry to, to be the bearer of bad news here. But so many of these really good Democrats are extremely intolerant Democrats and will not listen to people who don't agree with them down the line. Too many Ted Cruz types are on the pure side of the Democratic Party, and they need to get themselves mature and grow up and learn to make deals. The art of politics is the art of making deals. It's the, the ability to get what you need and, not, and, and give up what you want. But you got to be willing to know. You got to be. You got to know what you want. You got to know what you need. You got to be willing to make some tough choices. And I'm sorry, the half of the Democratic Party that I love, they're great on theory. They're great on policy. 
You try and apply that to practical reality, and they are just getting their pants beaten in by the Republicans who are just making running rings around them with strategy and tactics and organization. No, you're, uh, sadly, you're right. Um, I, I hate agreeing with that, but you, when you're right, you're right. Uh, Norm, uh, why don't you tell everybody when you're on the air and, and how to get you if you they want to get the subscription because it's really worth it and um, plug yourself a little bit. And thank you again for doing this and, and, putting, well, up with my, and, and putting up with my crass humor. <laughs> Well, no, I, I mean, I appreciate the opportunity, and certainly uh, my show is, I'm on the West Coast. I'm in Los Angeles, so for me, it's 3 to 6 in the afternoon. On the East Coast, it's 6 to 9 in the evenings. In the Midwest, it's 5 to 8 in the evenings, and in the mountain time zone, it's 4 to 7 in the afternoons. Um, our first hour is always free and commercial-free. We put it up on the website, like, very quickly. So for people who don't know what it is we do, and by the way, my voice isn't normally like this. I'm, I've just got a cold. It's the time of the season. Um, but for people who don't know what it is we do, a good way to find out would be just to listen to the first hour free and commercial free. An hour boils down to 38 minutes because we take out all the top of the hour stuff. There's no traffic and weather from Chicago or Albuquerque or Minneapolis, St. Paul, wherever. Uh, and, and there's no commercial. So the first hour is always free and commercial free at our website, normangoldman.com. There's all kinds of free stuff at normangoldman.com, including the story of why I pronounce my name, Norman Goldman, my life story, which is sad, but I think very America-affirming, is up there as well. Uh, the podcast is $10 a month or $100 a year, which gets you two months free. The podcast gives you all three hours of the show uh, totally commercial-free, and also with all the top-of-the-hour stuff taken out. We often do uh, law time. I call it, Ed, Ed Schultz dubbed me his senior legal analyst, and it stuck with his audience. So when I started our show in 2009, I just kept it. So very often at the beginning of the second hour, we'll do senior legal analyst time. We did a uh, case the other day where Nebraska and Oklahoma are suing Colorado in the Supreme Court to try and get the Supreme Court to order Colorado to stop legalizing cannabis, which I just found amazing. We did senior legal analyst time on that. I do a lot of law stuff, Supreme Court cases, various state Supreme Court cases, the marriage quality thing has been an ongoing law class. I mean, I was a practicing attorney for 25 years. I gave that up. We only do the, 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 the law on the show now. Um, so the podcast is all three hours with commercial free, everything commercial free, all the top of the hour stuff out. And of course it's, it's 24, seven, 365 available. Anyone can download it. They can put it on their MP3 player. A lot of people, uh, download it at night and then they listen to it in their car to work the next day. We have free app, our own apps for Android and, uh, Apple, normangoldman.com, free smartphone apps. Tune in is a great app. Uh, I have no commercial ties with them, but I, I gave them our show as an app. So on the TuneIn app, people can listen to us, and that's very popular. We're very popular on the TuneIn app. Uh, people can stream us literally through Facebook, the Norman Goldman Show on Facebook. We've got a an app there, a little square that says Listen Live. You can listen to the show through Facebook. You can listen through our website, normangoldman.com. You can stream through WCPT, the Chicago station, uh, and, and, and their website is Chicago's Progressive. ProgressiveTalk.com. I've asked them about changing the name. They've told me to go pound sand because they've already done the branding and positioning. Fair but enough. I mean, they use the same they use the same language. They said we've already branded and positioned the thing. You want us to totally change that? No, we've put too much into it. And I'm like, okay, I, it's your radio station. You do what you want. But through the apps with smartphones, through streaming through Facebook, streaming through our website, um, you can. You know, I've got people. I got a call from a guy in Buffalo, New York. Maybe it was Albany, New York, a few days ago who was listening on TuneIn through his smartphone. He Bluetoothed it into his speakers in his uh, car. I mean, I've done a, I did a, I have a whole YouTube channel on YouTube, Nor the Norman Goldman Show. You can just type in the keywords Norman Goldman, and I did a whole video, six-minute video, on how to listen to the show in your car speakers as if we were on the radio. There's only a few radio stations that are willing to carry us. The big radio stations are owned by two giant corporations. Mitt Romney owns half of one of them. They have declared liberal talk doesn't work. They've declared us liberals. They, they won't allow us on their radio stations. 
Limbaugh, Beck, and Hannity, their ratings have long since disappeared. These two giant companies, Cumulus and Clear Channel, are hemorrhaging money on those guys, but they're tied to these big money contracts, and, and so they're stuck. And and as part of the $10 podcasting package, I do an extra segment a day called Beyond the Norm, and that's for our subscribers only, and I've done a whole long series in the Beyond the Norms. There's 10 to 20 minutes a day, generally about 15 minutes. Again, everything commercial-free, because if somebody's paying, I'm not going to run any commercials. Um, uh, and I've done a whole, like, I don't know, 15 or 20 segments on what has happened to over-the-air radio. And if, if awesome. people haven't I paid attention... I mean, yeah, and you can just listen to the September 26th. Everything I've done on, on radio has been this year, this calendar year. I started on January 20th with a five-part series that whole week, just breaking down what has happened. And, and, and people really don't know. They think radio is the way it was in the 60s and 70s, even in the 80s, and it ain't. Radio has been has been nationalized. Every radio station, virtually every radio station in America now is just a speaker. I mean, there's nobody there. It's, you could do a radio station in a closet now, literally, with a couple of computers tied to a satellite dish. You don't have any local talent. You don't have any local engineers. You don't have anybody. Or local it's jobs. literally un, un automated. And so radio is dead. AM radio is 11% of all radio listening. It's been destroyed. We need to live in the digital world. And fortunately, there's a big, very robust digital world. You're part of it, Tom. This show, Internet it. Radio, is huge. Norman, thank you for the compliment. And um, thank again, thank you so much for doing this. NormanGoldman.com. I will have all the links in this when I post this up either later tonight or tomorrow. Um, thank Again, thank you for putting with my humor. I didn't expect to say BJ, but I did. <laughs> we went there. I'm sorry, I'm sorry my voice isn't what I want it to be, but I got to go get some more tea and honey. You're, and hopefully you're, we'll... you're a trooper, and you, you, you uh, trooped with us as with their, your voice so I, I really appreciate that because i if i would have been okay with rescheduling but you didn't anyway and i really you know um i really do appreciate that um we're gonna uh, i'm gonna let you go because you've given us an extra 20 minutes almost and thank you again norm and what we're gonna do when we come back is we're going to uh do our regular show so if you want to stick around and see what some say with tom and nikki is like um <laughs> We warn you. Yeah. Hey, and Nikki, thank you for everything. Nikki, I really appreciate your work. And Tom, thank you for the thank you both for the invitation, and I'll be happy to come back anytime. No problem. No problem, Norman. Thank you so much, my friend.